from Studio K at Foxborough Cable Access. Saffron is essentially the stamen of a rose. Feeling creative? Sage has a great flavor. Is your palate needing a new challenge? Well, let's cook with Mike Damasio. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Let's Cook with Mike. It's fall, as you can see by our uh, skeletons here in our studio. We're getting ready for Halloween. Well, tonight I'm gonna, we're going to scare the children because what we're going to do is we're going to make a child-friendly meal, macaroni and cheese, but we're going to sneak some vegetables in there and they'll never know they're there. Uh, so we're going to make a, uh, we're going to cook our pasta, pasta and we're going to make a delicious cheese sauce and it's going to incorporate these, uh, this carrot and butternut squash into the cheese sauce. So we have a lot to do today. There's a lot of cooking, a lot of preparation, and we're also going to add some chicken tenders in the uh, homemade chicken tenders in the end as well. Again, lots of kid favorites, uh, and we're going to sneak in those vegetables, and they'll never know what happened. All right. So if you guys are all ready, I'm ready. Let's cook. We're going to start off. I started our water boiling because nothing takes longer than watching a pot of water try to boil. So we started the water nice and early. I'm going to put in my few cups of pasta here. And I'm going to set my timer so that we will not overcook that pasta. We're going to set that for nine quick minutes, which is what the box recommends. And start. Okay. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start making our uh, bechamel, which is a roux with milk. A roux is flour and butter. And add the milk, you get a nice bechamel. And that's a great basis for any cheese or cream-based sauce. All right. Just give the pasta a little stir here. And that will be boiling for the next nine minutes. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is heat up my stove here. I'm going to put in a quarter, stick, a quarter pound of butter. We're going to let that melt for a little bit. And while that is melting, we're going to chop up our vegetables, and I'll explain what we have here going on in our, going on in our uh, dish today. So as you saw, or as I told you, we're going to be making the mac and cheese. So with the mac and cheese, we have a lot of delicious ingredients here. We have some fine shredded cheddar cheese and some Parmesan cheese, which will be the basis for the cheese sauce. We have a beautiful garlic and shallot here as well that are going to add a little bit of sweetness and flavor for the cheese sauce. Uh, we're going to also mix in some American cheese, which will just give it a nice creamy texture once it's done cooking. And as I said, we're going to throw in this, we're going to dice up nice and small these butter, uh, butternut squash and this carrot into our sauce so that the kids are getting their vegetables and you'll be happy knowing that they're getting their vegetables and they won't even know they're there. We pick the right colors, right? We pick the same colors as the cheese so that Again, we can hide them. We don't want to put a green vegetable in there. It'll change the color and the texture altogether. So while the butter here is melting, I'm going to chop up these vegetables. Now I'm going to make them nice and small. I brought a new tool today, a tool I'd never used on the show before. But this is a, a great, they call it a smart stick. I call it a hand mixer. Uh, it's a mini hand mixer. And what we're going to do is we're going to cook down these uh, carrots and butternut squash enough so that they'll get soft enough and we're going to be able to um, emulsify them and mix them right into the cheese sauce so they'll never know they're there. So again, I'm going to make these nice and small as we're waiting for our pan to heat up here so that they'll, be, they'll cook quicker and they'll be easier to, uh, to mush up when we're ready to mash. This is just a nice fresh carrot, already peeled, ready to go. Put that, set that aside. And I'm going to do the same with the butternut squash. Nice and small. Great time of year for butternut squash. Fall harvest is here. It's a delicious, underused uh, vegetable, especially throughout the rest of the year. Even though it's not as uh, popular or around as much, it's still very delicious, very sweet. I call it candy because it is that delicious. All right, I'm going to finely mince up my garlic and my shallot and add it to my cooking butter here, which is eventually going to become the roux, and which will eventually become the bechamel, which will eventually become the cheese sauce. So I had a nice large piece of garlic. That is a big piece of garlic right there. 
but we're going to dice it up nice and small. Again, we don't have to worry about how small we get it because we're going to use our hand mixer here, our smart stick, as the company promotes it as, to, again, make everything nice and small. So I'm using about two tablespoons of uh, garlic and shallot. Again, more vegetables that you're hiding on your children here. So obviously this is a much better dish than serving your child the, the uh, box cheese sauce, which is loaded with sodium and artificial this and that and the other thing. It's always better to give them nice fresh food. And again, it takes a little bit of extra time, but in the end, you're, you know, you're serving them something that's homemade, fresh, uh, you know what's in it, no mysteries. And in the end, it's going to be much, much better for them. All right. So we're almost ready. We're going to let those vegetables cook down just a little bit. Let them get a little translucent. And then we're going to add the flour in there to start making the roux. And we're going to go for a blonde roux today. There's basically four levels of roux that you can make. And all that is is how long you cook the flour for. Now, the more you cook it, the more nuttier it is, but it's also less flavorful. And the less you cook it, you're going to get more buttery, less nutty. And uh, it also thickens better the less it is cooked. You're not cooking out all the, all the flour. So I'm going to start to slowly add this into our butter mix. And you want it kind of like a thick, a little thicker than an Elmer glue. If you were pour, squeezing out Elmer glue out of a bottle, you want to kind of get it a little thicker than that. You want to lim uh, it obviously uh, you want to add it, the flour in slow enough so that you eliminate any lumps. The last thing you want to do when your cheese sauce is get a lump of flour. All right. That's great. Looking good. Now if I, you know, we we're, we're going to let this cook a little bit. We're going to activate the flour here with the butter and get all that going nice. Uh, but again, we could cook this for another seven to 10 minutes and it will become like a chestnut color. And we can go another 13 minutes, 14 minutes, and you, it'll become a deep, deep mahogany and very, very nutty. But again, it won't be as good as a thickener at that point. So we're gonna let that settle just a little bit. I'm gonna go grab some milk here. And we're gonna add about three cups of milk to this mixture. I don't wanna overdo it, maybe a little less. We're going to do it nice and slowly so that, again, it incorporates nicely into the roux. As you can see, that's nice and thick. You can see how it's moving around in there. Still pulling away from the sides. The last thing you want to do with a roux is burn it. Uh, you just need to start all over again if you ever burn this, the roux. So we're going to slowly add our milk here. Cook it up nice. Again, we want to try to eliminate the, so there's no lumps. All right, that's one cup. And to make a roux, very simple. I don't think I said this in the beginning. You want to start with equal parts butter, equal parts flour. So uh, obviously the larger the sauce you're making, the more butter and flour you need. So if you use a, like I used a quarter stick of butter, and I used a uh, quarter cup of flour. And you get this nice, beautiful, creamy base for your cheese sauce. This is just two cups. We're going to go one more because we do want it a little creamy because this cheese, all this cheese is going to thicken this up real nice as well. So let's get our third cup in here. And after this, once the milk heats up just a little bit, once the milk heats up, we're going to add our carrots and butternut in there, and we're going to be all ready uh, to, you know, continue with the cheese sauce. But we're going to cook that down for a while as well to make sure that the vegetables get nice and soft. All right, we're going to keep moving that in. We're going to add a little bit of, a little bit of salt, which I don't typically do, but because of the flour, you really want to add a little bit of salt just to bring out some of the flavor that we're going to be. Uh, kicking in here, and then of course some pepper. Mix it and blend it nicely. And as you can see, it's nice and thick. Great basis for a 
uh, for a cheese sauce here. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go actually another half a cup. Oops. Just to get a little creamier. Beautiful. I'm going to add the carrots and the butternut here. Whoops, making a little bit of a mess. Our nine minutes is up. Time flies when you're having fun. Boy, that pasta cooked fast. I'm going to just slow that down a minute. We're going to need all the stove stop top space we can use today. i got a lot going on here. Definitely want to clean up my mess. Clean as you go, unless you work in a restaurant, then you have somebody else do it for you. All right. So again, I'm going to add my carrots and butternut squash here. I'm going to turn down the heat on this. I'm going to take this cover. Oop, where did the cover go? There it is. Take this cover, cover that, bring the heat down, and once again, we are going to time that for about nine minutes and get the vegetables nice and soft. So off with the timer again. Let's get this milk out of here. Back in our Studio K refrigerator. All right, we're gonna have a lot of dishes to do at the end of this one, Deb. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna take a second and empty out our pasta here. Keep this off to the side for a moment while we don't need it. Add a little bit of oil in there so it doesn't stick. Stop this from beeping. Always good. Mix up the oil a little bit again just so the noodles don't stick. They're going to stay there nice and hot. They cook perfectly, I'm sure. I don't miss. I don't miss with the pasta. All right. So now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to make our chicken tenders. All right, so with this, we need a little more, another pan. I'm gonna set that on, get that heated up. We're gonna basically do a, uh, like a Parmesan style uh, uh, chicken wing where we're going to pan fry the chicken that I have here. Now what I did is I just took a breast of chicken And I kind of made, so they call it, you know, scallopini. So I made little thin cutlets, all right? And if you made uh, chicken parmesan before, you know it is a process. So here is the process to make chicken parmesan. All right, it's a three-step. This is called a breading station. This is how they do uh, all your uh, sauces and starches and I mean, uh, chicken parmesans and veal parmesans and uh, around the restaurant business. First you dip it in the flour, then in the egg, and then in the breadcrumb. And I'm going to do this for about six pieces of chicken here. Notice, don't try this at home. Two at one time. We're living on the edge here. All right. As you can see, I'm always wearing my gloves. This is one of the reasons why I like to wear gloves chicken, raw chicken, raw eggs, just a lot of ways of passing on bacteria, cross-contamination. Hands are the biggest issue in food service industry. It's the cause of, it's got to be at least 90% of all foodborne illnesses that come out of a restaurant always happen because somebody didn't clean their hands. I know nobody likes to hear that. We all love to go out to eat and it's always a treat and we should be treated properly when we go out and spend our money. But sometimes people like to take shortcuts. But This is my favorite time of year though as we're transitioning from
fall to winter. I don't like winter. I do like fall. And I like fall especially because football season and baseball playoffs and the World Series. And uh, whenever this gets played, the Cubbies and the Indians are in the middle of it right now. Indians just won their first game. Looks like game two might be a rain out. But they'll get it in. They'll play till two in the morning. All right. So I just, uh, we breaded the chicken. There it is. Nothing like making a mess. This is a very messy meal. It's all right in the end. Staff will love it. It's worth every dirty dish. Right, that. <laughs> All right, getting these gloves on. Here we go. We're going to pan sear our chicken here. Get that ready. While our vegetables are still going beautifully with our bechamel. Still not a cheese sauce yet, still just a bechamel. Six pieces fit perfectly in our pan. We're going to let those saute for a little bit. All right. All right, do a little tidying up here. I'll tell you, having the, this is the first time I've had a timer on the show, and you see how fast time goes by. We're almost at 18 minutes. Okay. See how our bechamel is still looking. Still looks delicious. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably cut this in half for uh, a time purposes and uh, quantity purposes. We have a lot of sauce here. Uh, it is enough for the pasta that we have, but I'm just going to cut a little bit out just to uh, time and space. And those vegetables are getting nice and soft. Our chicken's cooking. Put it off there. Let me flip this chicken. Nice, beautiful, fantastic, it is gorgeous, gorgeous little chicken cutlets here. Again, kids love fried chicken, you know, some, so again, the fried chicken, this is very easy, any day, every day, uh, again, you know what's going into it, it's not a frozen patty with all kinds of fillings and preservatives, it's just a nice chicken breast, you know, these days, two dollars a pound. Slice it nice and thin, a little flour, a little egg, a little breadcrumb, put it in a pan with some oil. Great meal. That by itself, throw some American cheese on it in between two pieces of bread or a roll. You get yourself a chicken palm sandwich. Who needs tomato sauce? Excellent, excellent. All right, I'm going to take a second here and just remove some of this sauce here. So I'm just going to back out some of this stuff here so we can get ready to puree Gonna add a little more milk just a little too thick yeah all right we're cooking with gas here beautiful I think this chicken's all set. Very nice. So the chicken, we're, again, we're just setting it aside for the time being until we're ready to put it in with our mac and cheese. That stuff is ready to go for a little bit. Right, put this another pan down. Dirty in them all today. All right, let's get this in here. All right, I'm gonna get another bowl. I'm gonna put our pasta in this small bowl because I'm gonna need this big bowl here for doing my mixing. So what I'm gonna do now is use my new tool. All right, I have my hand mixer here. I have my vegetables with my bechamel in here. I'm just gonna pour this all in here. Once I get a nice puree on this, got a little bit of burn there, get that out of there. It's tough to keep the flour from, you know, sticking and burning the pan. You got to really keep it moving through the whole time. So this is going to be a little bit of noise. And all this is doing is just 
as you can see, it's already taken on the orange color of the cheese. So again, we're gonna fool our kids. They're not gonna know what hit them. They're gonna go to bed thinking they had a mac and cheese meal, and we know we gave them vegetables. This is a real handy dandy tool. If you ever get a chance to go pick one up, 30 to 50 dollars, depending on the model. This is a nice Cuisinart. I think it was 30, 30 dollars, 29.99 at a Kohl's. Great instrument. I use it a ton, especially for sauces and things just like this. So we're gonna put that back into our pan. Look at that beautiful color. There's our timer. See that? 18 minutes has gone by, but I don't like having my time told to me. I like just going. All right, let's move this out of the way till we're gonna need this again. Very good. All right, so now we're going to start up our cheese sauce. So this cheese sauce, I mean, whoa, thick, delicious, sticking to my finger. It's exactly how the kids want it, exactly how I want it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this back up to temperature should just take a minute with this induction cooker as we found this thing cooks very very quickly and we're going to add the fun stuff we're going to add our cheeses and we're going to add uh, a little bit of love that goes along with the cheese to make it taste extra special as you can see it's starting to bubble already we're going to fold in our shredded cheddar first bring out the yellow it's about a cup and a half of shredded cheese Delicious. It's going to incorporate nicely. Oh, yeah. Taking on the yellow with the orange. We got a beautiful looking sauce here. Tremendous. Parmesan cheese, add a little sharp to it. Very nice. It's a nice shredded Parmesan cheese, delicious. I mean, why would you ever go back to Kraft? Come on. Or Auntie Annie's. Maybe if you had it at Auntie Annie's kitchen, but not out of a box. All right, and then we're gonna add, this is just cut up uh, American cheese. Like I mentioned, this is very nice. Just smooths it all out. Gives it a little creamy texture. Well, unfortunately, because I, I call it not real cheese, but it's a favorite of the kids. And again, just get it in there. We're going to get it to melt. It's going to add a little shine to it. It's going to make it a little creamier. Smooth it out all together. Tremendous. Can you tell there's vegetables in there? No way. I'm gonna do a little taste test here. Make sure we're on course. Oop, no spoon in there. Gonna do it the old fashioned way. I was gonna use my finger, but I won't. All right, see where we're at here. Very nice. You can taste all three cheeses. You can taste the creaminess that we made with the bechamel, very nice. This is gonna stick to their ribs. Very nice. Delicious. All right. And now, take this pan back. So this pan just had the sauce in it. No big deal. I'm gonna use it again because I'm gonna put my pasta in here. for the sauce. Delicious. Pour the mac and cheese in there. Oh boy, looks like we got enough for everybody today. When do I never have enough for everybody? I make sure everybody gets fed. There's one thing I do is feed people. At home, at work, and at play, because this is play. This is play. This is the fun part. Well, looks very creamy and cheesy deliciousness. I think I have this huge platter here, which is perfect for the amount of food we have here today. Very nice. 
I do have to get my garnish ready. So I'm gonna do a little garnish right here, a little parsley. Just gonna pull a little bit of this off. I'm gonna do a rough chop here. I'm not gonna make it too fine. Cause there's nothing wrong with a little parsley on top. Tremendous. All right. So let's just say you had a family of two kids, your husband, your wife, you're making dinner for them. You brought out a platter like this. Holy moly. Kids, we're eating. We're eating dinner tonight. Nice. Beautiful. Cherry on top. A little bit of sprinkle of the parsley. Oh my goodness. Well, I know I get excited about my food, but how do you not love mac and cheese? So, again, within our half hour time, we created a delicious homemade mac and cheese with chicken cutlets, uh, Parmesan style. It's, uh, it looks delicious, so I'm going to dig right in. Like the King's Taster, have to make sure everybody's going to be all safe and sound when they try it. Get right in there, a little bit of chicken, a little bit of pasta. Delicious. Well, we have enough for everybody in Foxborough, looks like. I have a big bowl of extra here. So come on down to Foxborough Cable Access. Try some homemade mac and cheese. I think you'll love it. So until our next episode, we'll see you soon. Bon appetit. We'll see you later. <laughs>